ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الا فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته قال الشيخ صالح الفوزان حفظه الله تنبيه من قسم البدعة الى بدعة حسنة وبدعة سيئة فهو مقتي ومخالف لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فان كل بدعة ضلالة وكيف تاس الله سبحانه وتعالى بأصوات الصلاة عليه السلام محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من الله سبحانه وتعالى be with the sahaba of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam increase our iman and accept all our devotions uh, inshallah today we continue the reading and explanation from the book aqidatu tawhid a book written by sheikh saleh الفوزان من الله سبحانه وتعالى be with him and preserve him for this ummah the sheikh in his discussion on the concept of al-bidya in deen innovations in the matters of a religion after the discussion on the kinds of bidya and the rulings guiding every kind of the bidya of the innovations the sheikh said tambi so if you could remember last week we according to the book we read and explained to us that innovations in the matters of our religion have different rulings though the general ruling that covers all kinds of bidya is misguidance there is no bidya innovation in this religion that stands to be a means to our guidance rather it is one of the ways that people can go astray so now it depends on whichever of the kinds of bidya a Muslim perpetrates or a Muslim falls into. But all acts of innovation are misguidance according to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. There are some of them that can take one out of the fold of Islam. Some can take one out of the fold of Islam. Some can make one to become a kafir a non-believer why some can make someone to be a moshirik a moshirik a polytheist someone or some can make one to be a sinner a sinner and someone or some of them can make one to be uh, a hypocrite a hypocrite a monarchic so all kinds of bidya, there is none of them that can increase one iman. There is no bidya in this religion that can increase your iman or that can hurt your reward. In this religion, be it of the belief, be it of the acts of worship, or be it of 
the akhlaq. So all innovations are rejected, as all innovations are misguidance. So based on that, Sheikh Salih al Fazan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him for the Ummah, post a notice to every one of us. He said, Tambi. Tambi is a statement to call our attention to something that is very, very important. The Sheikh said, Man qassama al bid'ata ila bid'atin hasana wa bid'atin sayyi'a fawa mukha, fawa muqti. Whoever, be it among the scholars, the past scholars, when we say the past scholars, we are not referring to the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they were the first set of the scholars in Islam. All companions, all Sahaba of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of them believed that all innovations in this religion are misguidance. All innovations in this religion of Islam are rejected and also are of misguidance. The same thing those who came after them among the, the Tabi'un, then the Tabi'in. Tabi but after some centuries, we had some scholars who came up to divide Bidya into two. The Bidya, innovations in the matters of religion, to divide it into two. They believe that there's what we call Bidya Tun Hasanah, the good innovations in the matters of a religion. Then Bidya Tun Sayyia, the evil innovations in the matters of a religion. So this is the response of Sheikh Salih al Fawzan today. And he is, the, he is not the only person or only scholar in Islam that has responded to that. Many uncountable scholars of Islam have responded, has responded to these innovative or innovated divisions. Because dividing Bidya into two, good and bad, is also Bidya. It's also Bidya itself. So it is not only Sheikh Saul al Fawzan, Rahimahullah, that has done that. Many scholars, a host of them, uncountable of them, have also dealt with this discussion. The Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Saleh Al Fazan said, "Man qassana al bid'ata ila bid'atin hasana wa bid'atin sayyia fa wa muqti." Whoever that divided bid'ah in the matters of religion, not in my, the big innovations, in the matters of worldly affairs, as we said in our previous lecture, there's nothing that is wrong with that. In fact, Islam welcomes and encourages that because it is, it makes ease of our lives. It makes ease of our lives, like riding on a, on a bicycle, driving a car, uh, using smartphones, using gas cookers, and many innovations that ease our lives. Islam does not con condemn that. In fact, Islam encourages that so that the life will be comfortable and simplified to every one of us. So Islam does not see anything wrong in that. But as regards the innovations in the matters of a religion, in the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the revelation given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the stipulated code and conduct of Sharia, all innovations in this aspect are rejected. They are, they are misguidance. So the Sheikh said, whoever among the scholars or among the students of knowledge that came up to divide Bidya into the good ones and the bad ones, for our Mokti, the Sheikh said, that person has made a big mistake. He said, Mokti. Yes, he made error. He made errors, an error to him. So, from any person or any scholar or any teacher, any alim or any ustaz, 
any imam that you listen to his lecture and the next thing you hear that Bidya in this religion is divided into two. There are some that are acceptable. There are some that are not acceptable. Anyone that says that, Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan said, Fawa Mukhti. Yes. That is an error from him. Wa mukhalifu liqulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa inna kulla bidi'atin dhalala. And we can see that the position of that scholar, of that person that believes that the good there are good and bad bidia innovations. So the position of that man is in, in contrary to the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Fa inna kulla bidi'atin dolala. Every innovation, every bidia in the matters of religion, in this deen of al Islam, dolala is misguidance. لأن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لشيخ سيد because the messenger of Allah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم حكم على البدع كلها he passed the same judgment on all innovations in this religion بأنها ضلالة that all innovations in this matter of religion in this religion of Islam then ضلالة they have misguidance وهذا يقول ليس كل بدعة دلالة بل هناك بدعة أسن. and this person will now come to say that no, not every innovation in this religion is misguided. you can see Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said absolutely all innovations in the religion is misguidance, misguidance. and someone comes to say no, <laughs> not all innovations in this religion is misguided. You can see the contradictory in that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَحْدَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ Those who disagree, or who stand, who st those who, who stand in contrary to the position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they should be warned. They should be warned. And to see our fitna, so that the fitna, they may not go astray to the level of becoming mushrik or of becoming kafir. Or the torment punishment will not be meted upon them on the day of judgment. In another verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waman whoever that differs from what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or did, that is whoever that stands in contrary to the position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the, the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, has been given to him, has been, he has been exposed to heat. So, and the person personally chose to follow not the path of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one Allah says, he will only abandon him he will leave him with that position of ease and if he dies on that position that where he is contrary to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then he shall be taken to the uh, to, 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 to feel the punishment of the Jahannam may Allah save us from that so that shows that wherever that says that not every innovation in religion are bad that person is as released a statement, a contrary statement to the position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ دُلَالًا Every innovation in this religion is misguidance. قَالَ الْحَافِذْ إِبْنُ رَجَبْ فِي شَرِعِ الْأَرْبَعِينَ Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with him, as we said, that he was not the only scholar in Islam that has responded to those scholars who divided videos into good and bad. He cited one of the great scholars, one of the students of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, Al-Hafiz Ibn Rajab Al-Hambali, is a renowned scholar, very, very talented. Yes, and he rendered many services in this religion. We're talking of scholastic services. There are many books he wrote 
There are many books he wrote. Yes, he was the first person to have uh, started a commentary on Sahih al Bukhari titled Fatih al Bari. Fatih al Bari of Ibn Rajab al Hambali was the first. In fact, some scholars said it is, is this is this is book Fatih al Bari that Ibn Hajar al Asqalani uh, came in contact with that made him to, to write his own commentary title with the same name, Fat Ulbari Bishari Sahih al Bukhari. So it was Ibn Rajab al Hambali that has written, written a book on that titled Fat Ulbari, though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him more uh, space of time to complete it. Yes, Fat Ulbari, the first Fat Ulbari was written by Ibn Rajab al Hambali, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, forgive him and bless him more. So, and there are other books that he wrote. Yes, he wrote a commentary on the book of Al Nawawi, Al Arba'in Al Nawawiya, the 40 hadiths collected by uh, Ibn by Nawawi, Nawawi Rahimahullah. So, Ibn Rajab Al Ahmadi ran a commentary. On a very, very comprehensive commentary titled Jamil Ulum Wal Hikam. Jamil Al Hulum Wal Hikam. So, in this book, Jamil Ulum Wal Hikam, because that book, Jamil Ulum, is the commentary of Ibn Rajab on Al Arba'in of Al Nawawi. And Sheikh Salif Al Fazan said, Call Al Hafiz Ibn Rajab, Fisher He Al Arba'in. Al Hafiz Ibn Rajab said in that commentary under the hadith qawluhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam ibn rajab said that the statement of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said kullu bid'atin dalalah kullu bid'atin dalalah every innovation in the matter of of the deen is misguidance the sheikh said min jawami al kalm and this is one of the Jawami al kalm Jawami al kalm means a, 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 a concise statement with full of benefit. Just a short statement, very concise, very small, a bridge presentation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that. In fact, he, he was given that more than the type of what is given to the Prophet and the messengers before him. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa utitu jawami'a al-kalmi That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me jawami'a al-kalmi That is, few words with much benefit, with more lessons, full of lessons. Only one phrase or statement, a word that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered can become an encyclopedia. Yes, can become a very big book, very big book. This is what we call Jawami al -Kalm. So Ibn Rajab al hambali said that the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kullu bidi'atin dhalala. Every innovation in the matter of religion is misguided. He said, Min Jawami al -Kalmi. is one of those concise statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yakhruju anu shi as small as this statement is this, this statement left nothing untouched left nothing untouched that is there is nothing to bring out of it there is nothing that can escape the, the rule of this statement wa huwa aslun azim min husul din it is one of the fundamentals of this religion. It's just like another statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever that uh, innovates, that brings in a new issue, a new ruling, or, or any act in this religion, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do 
and neither did he order anyone to do it. Ma laysa minhu. What is not part of what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did or what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered us to do? For what to do? That thing will be rejected, will not be accepted. Fakullu man ahadatha shi'an wa nasabahu ila din. Ibn Rajab al-Hambali now said that whoever that brings in anything into this religion, fakullu, me, ustaz, imam, the sheikh, the mudir, the, 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 the muallim, the lecturer, muhadir, al-khatib, the Friday uh, khutbah imam is known to be khatib. Whoever the person may be, fakullu man ahadatha shi'an wa nasabahu ila din. Whoever that innovates anything and links that thing to religion, to Islam. And that thing does not have a source in this religion. And that thing will be returned back to him. That thing will be rejected back to him. Will not be accepted. Because it is a misguidance. The religion of Islam is free from that. Is innocent from this. Wasawahu fi dar kama sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Maybe that thing that the person innovated into this religion is uh, it has to do or it has connection with the acts of belief. Well, amal, I will amal, or the actions, the acts of worship. I will akwal vajra. It has to do with statement, the apparent statement. Well, baatina or the non-apparent ones. So whatever the person has innovated into this religion, that thing will be rejected back to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept that. So this is the quotation from uh, Jamil Ulum wal Hikam by Ibn Rajab al Hambali that Sheikh Salih al Fazan rahimahullah cited. After that, Sheikh Salih al Fazan said, Wa laysa li awlahi hujjah. They said, those who came out to divide Bidya into good and bad, they do not have any evidence whatsoever to support or buttress their position. That there are some innovations that are good. There are some Bidya in this religion that are good. Illa qawla Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fi salati taraweeh ni'mati Except the statement of Ibn Umar uh, of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That is the only reference for them. Out of all the references we have in Islam, the resources that we have, it is only that statement of Umar that they head on to. What's that statement? In you know, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, during Ramadan he will come out he will, he will come out in, in the midnight to lead the Muslims, the companions for on Salat uh, on Qiyam Ramadan Qiyam Ramadan you know, they will wake up in the, in the midnight Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. he did this for the first time he did it in the second time. Then he did it in the third time or the, the third or the fourth time. The companions were expecting him to come, to come and lead them as usual. So when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come out to lead them. So by the time he came out, he said that I deliberately not come out to lead you because I don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it as wajib upon you and you won't be able to do it. It shows that uh, coming together to observe Qiyam Ramadan in Ramadan is, is established in Islam, but it's not compulsory. That's why Muhammad Islam did not come on the third or fourth day to lead the companions on that. But it is established. Yes, it is established by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for him not to come out on the third or the fourth shows that it is not compulsory. And he used that method to teach them. And Muhammad was fond of using that method.
to tell the compiler this thing is not compulsory or this thing is compulsory. The same thing with the Hajj. Someone came to him that the Hajj that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written upon us to do, is it every year? Muhammad Sala said, if I should say yes, then Allah will make it compulsory on you and you will not be able to do it yearly. So it shows that Hajj, doing Hajj is established. And it is not every year. It's an obligation of Muslim. It's only just once. The rest will be nafila for you. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not come out on the third or fourth day to leave the companions in that salat of Qiyam Ramadan. Then, when it's time of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu left people to observe, yes, separately, individually, without bringing them or without coming out to lead them. No. So he allowed them to pray alone without coming out to lead them in Qiyam Ramadan. So at the time of Umar, Bunu Khattab radiallahu anhu, the second Khalif, Umar came out and he met them praying alone differently. He met them. Then the next thing, he asked them to come together so that only one Imam will lead them. Only one Imam will lead them. I now utter the statement, Ni'mati al bidya to Abihi. This is this bidya is good. This is a good bidya. So that statement of Ni'mati al bidya to Abihi was the only reference of those scholars who said that in the bidya we have good and the bad bidya, uh, innovations in the matters of religion. Waqalu Haydan, Sheikh Sal Al Fazan said. They also said, Inna ha uhudithat ashiya lam yastankir as salaf. That Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu innovated some many things that the early Muslims, the early scholars of Islam did not want against, did not condemn. Myth law, examples of Jam'u al-Qur'an, compilation of the Qur'an, fi kitab wa wahidin, to be in a book form. وَكِتَابَةِ الْحَدِيثِ وَتَدْوِيلِهِ And written down, documentation of the hadith. Documentation of hadith. So, this, this, they also counted all this as part of the good innovations. وَالْجَوَابْ عَنْ ذَلِكِ Sheikh Salih al-Fazan said, Now get the responses of that. Number one. أَنَّ هَذِي الْأُمُورِ لَا عَصْلُ فِي الشَّرْعِ فَلَيْسَةِ مُحْدَثًا we are talking of the Qiyam Ramadan. It has source. It has source in this religion. And that source is what we narrated to us. It is found in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to come out to lead the companions in Salat uh, in Qiyam Ramadan. So what Imur radiallahu ta'ala anhu approved was not the first event of, of, of its kind in Islam. Rather, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established that during this time. So it has basis. Then, that Al-Qur'an, to, well, to be in a book form, was not a new thing. Even the Qur'an it refers to it itself. alif lam dhalika al-kitab. Dhalika al-kitab. So if someone now makes the Qur'an to be in a book form, it's, it's, the person is going in line with the source. Qur'an is already in a book form. Yes. It be, and it should be in book form. So it is not a new thing. It's not a new thing. And that's why it has been compiled. It has been compiled during the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but not in a book form to be on pages, maybe on, on leaves, on skins, on animal skins. Yes. But to be on a book form as we have it now uh, today, Al-Quran, the book of Allah, the, the word of Allah, was not in that form, was not in that shape. But Quran itself, the content of the Quran it refers to that, that formation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in many verses of the Quran, Allah calls the Quran kitab, it's a book. So if someone now works on that trade to make Quran in a book, that person has never innovated anything in the day because for it to be in a book, 
has a source. وَقَالُ عُمَرُ The Sheikh said, the statement of Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه نعمة البدعة نعمة البدعة That statement of Umar that these scholars held as a reference The Sheikh said, يريد البدعة اللغوية لا الشرعية What Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه intended by that was not the Sharia innovations It's not Sharia implication of بدعة Rather, it is linguistic application of media as we said in the, pre in the previous lecture any new thing is is more death is media is innovation yes we computer is innovation yes the whatsapp the social media they are innovations but their innovations do not have anything to do with the religion do not have anything to do, anything to do with the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do not have anything to do with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa taala. But just to ease our lives, is to ease our communications, the way we source for information, the way we arrange information, the way we process it, and the way we also interpret it. That's the essence of all these social media. So Islam, social media does not have anything to do with Islam. But Muslims can make use of social media to better their lives, to make things easy for themselves. So one will not say that whoever that does not use social media is a sinner. No. As one will not say whoever that uses social media is a sinner. No. It now depends on what you use social media for. That means using social media alone is not rewarding. Yes, it's not rewarding. It's not, not, it's, not, it's not an act of worship. So all this, when you use the word bidya for this, you are referring to linguistic meaning, not the sharia implication of it. So Sheikh Soil al fazan and some other scholars of Islam, they say that the statement of Umar ibn Khattar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, ni'imati, ni'imati li bidi'atu adihi. He was not referring to Sharia implication of it. Rather, he was referring to the linguistic meaning. Because the coming together of the people for Qiyam or Ramadan to be led by one Imam was not an innovation in this religion. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did that not for one day, not for two days. Yes, but he only, he, he only feared that that will not become an obligation on the Muslim. And the Muslim will not be able to do that. Now become seen on them. That is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa restricted himself on the third or fourth day. فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ أَصْلُ فِي الشَّرْعِ يُرْجَعُ إِلَيْهِ The Sheikh said, whatever that has the source, that has the source, establishment, in this religion, then we we'll go back to it. We we'll go back to it. In Akila, if someone said, it no who bid but that thing too is also innovation. For we bid la and we we'll say it is bid in the aspect of language, not in the aspect of Sharia. The annal bid sharan, because bid in the matters of religion. Ma laysa lahu aslun fi sharia. What has no source in Sharia? What has no source in Sharia? For instance, some people are fond of doing this on Friday or every Friday after Salat al Asri, they will gather, they will be in a round form, spreading a white garment in their midst, then chanting La ilaha illallah, the do that. The question is this. Did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ever do that? Is there any source for this in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or did he ever order us to do? Even if he could not do it because of much more, uh, much of his assignment, did he ever do it? So he did not do it, and he did not order anyone to do it. Then there's no source for it. So what has no source in in, in Islam? Is known to be what? 
be their innovation. Some people celebrate the birthday of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, known to be Mawlid Nabi. It's a question. Did Muhammad, is there any source for it? Did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ever did that in his lifetime? Did he order you to do it? The answer is no. So once it's no, then it is Bidya. It's Bidya. Yes. So this is the yastic, the parameter to measure the innovated actions and innovated statement in this religion. Islam is so simple. But the simplicity of Islam lies on, on the knowledge of Islam. So the Sheikh said, وَجَمْعُ الْقُرْآنِ فِي كِتَابِ وَاحِدٍ لَهُ أَصْنُ فِي الشَّرِعِ He said that compiling the Qur'an to be in a book form has a source in this religion. It is not the innovated in this religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لِأَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَسَلَّمْ Because the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَسَلَّمْ كَانَ يَامُرُوا بِكِتَابَةِ الْقُرْآنِ He used to command the companions to write down the Qur'an in a book like in Kenya Maktuba Mutafarriqa but the the written ones were scattered in their hands not compiled together Fajama'u al-Suhaba radiyallahu anihum fi mus'af wahidin hifdullah and the compilers came after him they, comp they compiled all the scripts together to be in a book form what is be the idea during the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it had been written by the scribes. We have the scribes. The scribes are those that used to write down the Quran for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Not only one person, not only two, three. They yeah, are more than that. That they used to write down the Quran. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we ordered them to do that. So the Quran was written on pages, but mutafarriqo, not gathered together not compiled in a book form so it was that that happened during the time of the companion the sahaba the student and he he ordered us to follow their sunnah alaykum bi sunnati hold on to my sunnah to his sunnah muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah to the khulafa al rashidin al ma'alin min ba'di and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifs the leaders after me so the companions came together to make the Quran to be in a book form to compile it to be in a book form so where is the video there there's a source for that the Sheikh said as regard the case of the Salat Tarawi the Qiyam Ramadan that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam observe it bi ashabihi layali he did observe it with the companions on some nights wa taqallafa anhum fil akhir but he restricted himself away from observing it with them khashiyata an tufrad alayhim for the fear that it will not be made obligation upon them وَاسْتَمَرُوا الصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ يُسَلُّونَهَا أَوْزَعًا مُتَفَرِّكِينَ فِي حَيَاتِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَفَاتِهِ And the companions kept on observing it individually to the rest of the time of the death of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and after his death إِلَى أَنْ جَمَعَهُمْ عُمَرْ بِالْخَطَابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنْهُ To the time that Umar bin Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه compiled, I mean, gathered them together he gathered them together with one imam كَمَا كَانُوا خَلْفَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَسَلَمْ as they used to be behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as we said وَلَيْسَ هَذَا بِدْعَى فِي الدِّينِ so what the Umar did is not or was not and is not an innovation in the religion rather it is in line with the practice of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم if Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم had condemned his own uh, waking up in the midnight to lead the companions or he has, he has told the companions that no, we are not doing that again because it is a sin or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not Allah has, has made it to be unpermitted anymore it is not permitted anymore then 
For another companion to have done it will now be Bidya. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa approved it. He established it. He approved it. And, and that is why none of the companions, when Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu revived this sunnah, none of the companions uh, condemned his reviver of this sunnah. None of them. So, wa kitabatul hadith aydala asru fi shari'i. And also, documentation of the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as a source itself. فقد أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعد الحديث لبعض أصحابه لما طلب من عذالي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أصحاب some people among his companions who write down the hadith for some of the companions in Sahih Muslim one of the companions who came from Yemen by the time he was going back to Yemen he said Ya Muhammad Oh Muhammad all what I have learned from you I could not I could not memorize everything. Please, allow me to write some of your statements, some of your, uh, of your teachings. Yeah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard that, that to be done for him. And that is what he took along with him to the city of Yemen. So, even now how some personalities, some scholars who defeated their times compiled the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or to, to, to document the life, the actions, the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is not innovation. Yes, because it has a source. Wa kana al mahzur min kitabatihi bi sifat amma fi hadi sallallahu alaihi wasallam khushiyatan an yaktalta bil Quran ma alaihi samilhu. Yes, when he was alive, he would ask them not to write the Quran, not to write the Hadith. Even the scholar said, not to write. Addressing the scribes that used to write the Quran, the scribes, the Kutab, Kutabul Wahai, Kutabul Wahai, they are the scribes. Some of the companions that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave them the assignment of writing down the Quran. So don't write down the Hadith, all the scribes of the Quran, and that does not prevent. Other companions from writing the hadith. The scholars say the essence of this is that the scribes of the Quran will not mix up the Quran with the hadith. They will not mix up the Quran with the hadith. Yes. But others can do the same thing. As we said. But when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, so the, there's not anything to, to be taken care of anymore. To be, to be cautious of nothing. Because his death uh, led to the, the stoppage, to the cease, to the cessation of the revelation of the Quran. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa died, no more revelation of the Quran anymore. So the companions were free to write one or two things, actions, devotions, the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لأن القرآن قد تكامل because Quran has completed and has been revealed completely. وضبط قبل وفاته and Quran has been completed and also written down during the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فنوّن المسلمون الحديث بعد ذلك حفظا له من الدعاء and the companion, the, the, the Muslims documented the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that in, with full documentation so that the, his teachings will not be lost. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their service to, to Islam, for their service to Muslims. Because they protected the book of their Lord and the Quran was Sunnata Nabi Him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sunnah of his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa abath al abithin of being lost and also it is protected uh, against the hands of those who want to play with it, who want to distort the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's see if the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, were not are documented subhanallah 
I know people will have forgot who is Muhammad. Will have forgot the personality of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is this documentation that serves as yesterday and policing to any action that whoever may be introduced to Islam. No. What you said now, where is the reference in the book of Hadith? What you said now, or what you did now, where is the reference in the book of Hadith? So assuming that there is no any documentation, no Sahih Bukhari, no Sahih Muslim, no all the Sunan, no al bayhaqi no al muwatta no Darakutni, all the books of Hadith, none of them is available. Subhanallah, it's only the Quran that we have. Wallahi, there have been a lot of distortions in this religion that nobody can query, can verify. It will be very, very difficult for us to, to verify any, any action. Look at the way we observe. If someone says that Salat al Subhi is 10 records, how will you reject that? How? There are no books of Hadith. How will you reject it? And it's not stated in the Quran that it is two rakats or it is ten rakats. How will you reject it? If someone comes up to say that, no, it is not five daily salats, it is ten, ten daily salats, how will you condemn that? When one of the pastors raised an issue, maybe early this year or early last year or two years ago, that there is no anywhere in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the Muslim to observe Salat five daily prayers. Those who talked at that time to rejoin him, to refute him, they had only one source. That source is the Hadith. So I didn't mean the Hadith was not documented. How would they have condemned that? How would they have established the truth? How would you establish the celebration of Eid al hadiha and Eid al-Fitri? How? If the hadith were not documented, how? How do you go about the fasting the month of Ramadan? The ethos and the etiquettes of fasting the month of Ramadan. If the hadith was not documented, how? The naming ceremony is there. How the ceremonial events that we have in Islam, they are documented by the hadith. How? How you make the verification? How? The acts of beliefs as well. Even the personality of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How do you how did you know that it is Muhammad bin Abdullah, not Muhammad bin Jafar, not Muhammad bin Taufik? How someone can came up to say that no, I am the prophet. My name is Muhammad. How how do you know that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is from the family of Quraysh, if not through the documentation of the hadith? In fact, there are a lot of many issues. Wallahi. Alhamdulillah for that documentation. So why will you not be using the documentation of hadith to serve as a, as a reference point for your own innovations? Whereas even the documentation of hadith, the time of Muhammad, the time of the companions, was not the first time of his, of his kind. As we said, Muhammad, the companions, some of them wrote down some teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa by his permission. By his permission, he said in Sahih Muslim. Yes. Look at the Adhan. The Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. How will you ver verify? Yes. We have some people that they, they call the Adhan in their local languages. How will you condemn them? Even if you don't have the Arabic text of it. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, for being Ahl Sunnah. And that's one, that's one of the benefits of being al Sunnah. You will be guided by the Quran, by the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the teachings of, of the early Muslims. You will practice your Islam as if you live in the time. Because they only practice their Islam with the Quran, with the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if the Quran, if the Hadith was not documented, look at the benefit. Now tell me, which other innovations can be so important and significant 
in the life of the Muslims and the absence of it may lead to the destruction of Islam. Is it the Mawlid Nabi? <laughs> Celebration of Mawlid Nabi, the Prophet of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it that one? Is it your celebration of Al Isra Al Miraj? Is it that one? Or is it the Zikru of one million times? Self punishment? Is it that one? Is it climbing the mountain of Arafah? Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters in Islam. Innovations, all innovations in the matters of deen are rejected and also are, they are a means to misguidance. What we have is the sunnah, the practices of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It is enough for us to give us the success of this world and the year after. To lead us to the straight way to the straight path. It is enough. The son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what are you now looking for in Bidya? In Bidya, what are you looking for in Bidya? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this as an act of worship. Inshallah, we continue next week on another topic that is related to the concept of innovations in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with Sheikh Salih al fazan because this book is very, very, very fantastic and very, very educating. Yes, it's a very good book that every Muslim or teachers or the imams, the lecturers need to read and teach their followers. Yes, because it is full of knowledge and benefits for this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve uh, our Sheikh Sheikh Salih Fawzan bin Abdullah al Fawzan and uh, keep him safe and healthy and all our scholars of Sunnah wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallama wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa